is another word of God through Jesus Christ, street and outreach ministry, raw and uncut productions. Uh, perfect time for the word. God bless you. We're getting ready to get into a powerful word. I'm getting ready to do some study. Y'all want to study with me? Come on and let's, uh, let's see. You're watching the word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Irish Telecast, and I'm very grateful that you're here, okay? Um, you can reach the ministry by calling 475 Three zero zero three eight five zero. And thank you so much for being a part of this broadcast. And watch this. Don't get caught up in the theatrics, but get caught up in the word. God bless you. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman Jr. The Lord has assigned me as Apostle teacher and prophet of the Word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Outreach Ministry. Thank you for joining the ministry for this broadcast that God is doing today. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't even know if he's going to have friends with me or not. I don't know, but we're going to find out. You can reach the ministry at 475-300-3850-24 hours. The ministry's website is also on the screen, so that way you'll know how to join us on the web. Not only that, but periodically there will be the Cash App link on the screen so you can share love offerings to partner with us as God uses us to help others in street and outreach ministry. There's always ongoing fundraisers because God uses the ministry to help others just like he did when he walked this earth. God bless you, and let's get in here and find out what it is the Lord want to say unto us. Come on. To the Word of God through Jesus Christ with Apostle Alan E. Coleman Jr. God bless you and enjoy the message. Last time on the Word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Outreach Telecast. Real quick, I need to jot over, I need to jog over rather, to the book of Job, chapter 1, where Job said to God in verse 10. Hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side 
thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance, meaning his cattle, is increased in the land. The devil was saying, I can't touch him or his stuff. Why? Because you, O oh God, have put a hedge of protection around him. When God has a hedge of protection around you, you cannot be touched. The devil says, but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. So when he said to God, You reach down and strike all he has, God didn't do that. Instead, what God did is he removed the hedge of protection. How? By his word. He said, Okay, everything he hath is in thy power. Just don't touch him. And God's word is bond. So angels do God's bidding because right there in Job chapter 1, Scripture says, in verse 6, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them, what it actually says in the Hebrew, in the midst of them. Now, the angels, they go before God daily. They do. Jesus even said that angels for children go before the Father daily. Watch how you treat children. So, Angels go before God, they have meetings and report and yada, yada, yada. And then here comes Satan, who used to be an elect angel. He used to protect God's holiness. Now he's not. He lost his position, but not his privilege. His privilege, he still can talk to God, but he don't have the position of protecting God's holiness no more. No, he wasn't the choir director in heaven. He protected God's holiness. He was a song. He was a doxology. So what happened? When he came in the midst of them, God ended the meeting. Why? Because it wasn't Satan business what they were talking about. In the book of Daniel, it says in Daniel chapter 10 that Gabriel said in verse 12, Fear not, Daniel. For from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. I have a word of encouragement for those of you that have been fasting. This word is coming from God, so it's for me also. Don't stop your fast. Because from, oh, glory, I'm hearing God. From the first day that you fasted, God heard your prayer. Wait a minute. He did more than that. Remember this scripture. I hope you all wrote it down. Isaiah 65, verse 24 where God said, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. That's what God said. No, listen, here's the gist of this lesson. The secret of how to move the hand of God in prayer is you have to understand, you have to be skillful in scripture. I hear people say, work the word. That's manipulation of witchcraft. Don't listen to that. You have to apply the word. You have to know to apply the right word at the right time on the right situation and you will get the right biblical results. God said, and it shall come to pass that before they call, before you go, Lord, before you do that, he said, 
I will answer. Why? Because he's omniscient. He knows your heart, your spirit. He knows what you're going to ask. He already knows if it's in his will or not because he knows what you're going to ask. And so when you ask, he already and asked. now, back to our show. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16, the Bible says, of what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. He said, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. And touch don't just mean with your hands. Don't think about the unclean thing. Stop looking at the unclean thing. Stop kissing the unclean thing. Stop saying unclean things. Stop. Stop. Where Jesus said, where he told Paul to write, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So if your body belongs to, now this was written for Christians. That wasn't written to unsaved people. This right here was a, to the people of Corinth, the brethren that were saved. So if you save, that scripture's for you. Stop polluting your body with stuff that is going to end up hurting you in the long run. Stop. The Lord says, stop. You can't. Listen, if you are saved, and you smoking. Do you know every time you take a drag of a cigarette, you and if the Lord, if the Lord is in your life, and if, if, if your if your body belongs to him and he's in your body, don't you know? Now there's a difference between being filled with the Holy Ghost and when he joins himself to you. There's a difference. When he joins himself to you, he's cleaning out a room in you for him so he can fill it. It's like when you go get an apartment. You go in there, you sterilize it, you clean it, you wash it, you polish it, you do everything you need to do. Then you start moving in. So when you give your life to the Lord, he comes in and he starts cleaning you up on the inside. Now, I used to curse every other word when I was in the world. Not no more. I don't even slip and do that because it's not my thing. I've been delivered. See, so when the Lord delivers you and he cleans you up and washes you up, then he moves in and fills you with himself. Then he sees through you. That's discernment. Then he speaks to, through you. That's the gift of tongues. Then he allows you to understand things you would never understand before. That's discernment. Then he allows you to tell people what's going to happen before it happened, and you just know it. That's the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. You just don't understand. You can't say, I love God, I serve God, I walk with God, I talk to God, and you're, you're living foul, you're drunk, you're high, you're cussing every other word, you're promiscuous, male or female. That's not a child of God. Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 12, if you notice, verse 33, either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So whatever is in your spirit, that's what's going to come out of you. Stop. Stop. And there's angels that God will send to help you. You just have to ask God to dispense them. I'm going to close with this prayer. But I want to... Let's see how the Living Bible says it, if God would allow us to go there. I'm going to close with this prayer. And there's some, God said there's some people that they're fasting. You need a boost. Well, God's going to use the ministry to give you that boost right now. And there's some that want to be free but don't have the strength to fight. 
God said he's going to use the ministry to fight for you right now. This is so important. And I'm also fighting for the wife God gave me. I'm fighting for her. I love her so much. So much. And when God start blessing you and preparing your life while he's moving, you need to, This all of us need to get prepared. Stop playing. Because your listen, how you respond to God is not going to determine whether somebody else be blessed. Because if you won't let God use you to be a blessing, God will go in his storehouse and replace you. We don't want that. We don't want that. I don't want to forfeit my blessings. And I know when God blessed me with a wife, I already, me and God didn't already had our talk. Lord, of course, I won't cheat on her. I'm not going to lie to her. I'm not going to argue. I don't cuss, so I'm not going to cuss at her. I, no, God said no. I, I, I wouldn't do that anyway because I'm not there. That's not the kind of man I am. But sometimes you got to sit with God and you got to talk things out with him and remind him, Lord, this why you. Okay. Let me go here for a minute. And then we're going to go to this other prayer, this prayer and close out. Isaiah 43, 26. Here's what God said. I'm going to read out of the Living Bible so it's plain as day. God said, oh, remind me of this promise of forgiveness. For we must talk about your sins. Plead your case for my forgiving you. This is what God said. Remind me of this problem. Let me go to verse 25. God said, I, yes, I alone am he who blots away your sins for my own sake and will never think of them again. Oh, remind me of this promise of forgiveness. For we must talk about your sins. God said you, he must. He must. He said, actually in the King James it reads, Put me in remembrance. Declarest thou that thou mayest be justified. He said, we must talk about your sins. And tell me why I should bless you. Matthew 12. Jesus said. Verse 25. Living Bible. Let me go back to verse 24. But when the Pharisees heard about the miracle, they said he can cast out demons because he is Satan, king of devils. Jesus knew their thoughts and replied, a divided king. Now listen, this is a, a word on demonology. This is a lesson. So those of you that are spiritual warriors, those of you that uh, engage in spiritual warfare and, and, and study angelology and demonology and, and deliverance and binding and loosening and stuff, you want to hear this. You want to read this. Uh, this is Matthew chapter 12, verse, I'm going to read 24 again. But when the Pharisees heard about the miracle, they said, he can cast out demons because he is Satan, king of devils. Jesus knew their thoughts and replied, a divided kingdom ends in ruin. A city or home Divided against itself cannot stand. That's why when you got people in your house that are not saved, y'all don't get along. The only way you'll get along is if you give into how they're living or they give into how you're living. But if you're saved, they're not. You're talking to the Lord, they're not. You don't want to drink, they do. You don't want to party, they do. Come on. It's not going to work. It's going to be problems, and you'll be miserable. Brother and sister, you'll be miserable. Jesus says, and if Satan is casting out Satan, he is fighting himself and destroying his own kingdom. And if, as you claim, 
I am casting out demons by invoking the powers of Satan, then what power do your own people use when they cast them out? Let them answer your accusation. But if I am casting out demons by the Spirit of God, capital S, then the kingdom of God has arrived among you. Now, take notes on this, verse 29. One cannot rob, rob Satan's kingdom without first binding Satan. Listen, one cannot rob Satan's kingdom without first binding Satan. Only then can his demons be cast out catch that. That's Matthew 12, verse 29. Yeah, verse 29. And then Jesus said in verse 30, anyone who isn't helping me is harming me. And this is the living Bible. Now, I want to share something else, then we're going into prayer, we're going to close. In verse 43 of Matthew 12, the same chapter Jesus talks about what happens after a demon is cast out. He said, this evil nation is like a man possessed by a demon. For if the demon leaves, it goes into the deserts for a while, seeking rest but finding none. That's because demons can't travel over water. That's why they hitch rides in people and on people and in automobiles and stuff. Yeah, check that out. Because they can't travel over water. Water is a symbol of purification. Let me read that again. Verse 43, Matthew 12, Living Bible. This evil nation is like a man possessed by a demon. For if the demon leaves, it goes into the deserts for a while, seeking rest, but finding none. Then it says, I will return to the man I came from. So it returns and finds the man's heart clean, but empty. The spirit is clean, but empty. The Holy Spirit, he has not moved in because the person didn't go that far. They might have changed. They might have stopped. They might have stopped smoking and stopped drinking and stopped cussing and stopped fornicating. They might have stopped cheating. They might have stopped gambling. They might have stopped smoking cigarettes. They might have stopped doing all of the above. And after they stopped, they didn't. Let God come in and live there. And because of that, so the demon returns and finds the man's heart clean but empty. Then the demon finds seven other spirits, more evil than himself, and all enter the man and live in him. And so he is worse off, worse, not worst worse off than before. What we're going to close with is this. Verse 29, Jesus said, one cannot rob Satan's kingdom without first binding Satan. Only then can his demons be cast out. And Jesus also told the disciples in Matthew 18, verse 18, and I tell you this, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven, and whatever you free on earth will be freed in heaven. Verse 19, I also tell you this, if two of you agree down here on earth concerning anything you ask for, my Father in heaven will do it for you. Verse 20, for where two or three gather together because they are mine, I will be right there among them. So write these scriptures down so that after this broadcast, when you pray, you'll be able to pray scripturally right. Okay? 
First thing, write down Ephesians 1 and 3. I'm just going to give you these scriptures, then we're going to go in prayer. But you got to have this. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. And these scriptures are going to do all the talking, not me. Okay? Ephesians 1 and 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath, meaning has already, blessed, it's a done deal, us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. So our natural blessings, marriage, a job, uh, material things, you know, restoration, all of that, was in heaven, in heavenly places, in Christ. And because of praying and fasting and your faith, believing God and beseeching God, you brought it down into the earth realm. Okay? And living right. That's Ephesians 1 and 3. Now, 1 John chapter 3, verse 22 says, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So that means walking right. You believe in God that he's given you your spiritual blessings and their heavenly places in Christ. And by your faith, you're bringing it down. By believing in God, you're bringing it down into the earth realm. And because you're walking right, God is giving them to you. In verse 14, again, this is uh, chapter 5, verse 14, and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. So he gave us everything already. When we live right, we get everything we ask from him. When we pray according to his will, he hear us, and when he hear us, he answer it. Write down John chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. Jesus, out of his own mouth, said these words. Chapter 14 of the book of John, verse 13, Jesus said, oh. Jesus said, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now that's another proof that Jesus is God. He said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. He didn't say, I asked the Father to do it. He said, anything you ask using my name, I will do it. He didn't consider it robbery to be equal with God, because he is God, manifest in the flesh. Again, some people say, like that evangelist, oh, he's not God. Nowhere in the Bible do it say it. In, in 14, chapter 14, verse 8, Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Verse 9, Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Okay. Ephesians 1 and 3, 1 John 3 and 22, 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15, the book of John, regular John, chapter 14, verses 13 and 14, actually starting at Matthew 12, because that's what we're going to close it, because we're going to bind and loose, Matthew 12, verses 20, we're going to 29, and then verses 43 through 45. Very important. 
I hope you wrote those down. And Isaiah 65, verse 24. Remember, God says, And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. That's what he said. That's what he said. I hope you wrote all the scriptures down. Now I'd like to ask you to do something. Something. Because I'm going to do it too. I can find what I'm looking for. I'm sure I will. I want to ask you. God, where is it? I don't normally do this. Oh, I see it. I don't normally do this, but I gotta walk off camera for a minute. Okay. The reason I had to do that is because y'all that are at home, we're gonna hold Jesus to what he said in Matthew 12, 29 out of the Living Bible. I have prayer requests of my own that I'm fasting for, written down right here on paper. And I'd like to ask you, if you're home by yourself, to tell the Lord what you're praying for. Or you can get you or the paper that you have, write down some things right quick that you need God to do for you that seem impossible. Impossible. Because we're going to touch and agree this ministry is going to touch and agree with you. Okay, now here's what we're going to stand. Oh, don't forget, write down 1 John 1 and 9. Because before you go to God, before you have the audacity, the gall, to go before him and start demanding stuff and making all, this, all these requests, the Lord said and told Brother John to write in 1 John chapter 1, Verse uh, 6, if we say that we have fellow, let's go back to verse 4. John wrote, and these things write we unto you that your joy may be made full. Excuse me, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Darkness here is talking about sin. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. The blood. God remembers that blood because it was shed on Calvary. If we say that we have no sin, 
Because there's people that say, I don't struggle with sin. I don't struggle in sin. You're lying. Look, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. This was written to Christians. How do we know? Because John wrote, verse 4, and these things write we unto you that your joy may be made full. So he's talking to Christians. Again, verse 8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So the first thing we need to do is say, Lord, I've sinned. Before we start praying, before we get into, oh, hallelujah. Uh, no, stop, 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 stop. Stop your hallelujah and your hallelujah. And let's say, let's start off this way. Now walk with me in this prayer because also we're going to bind and loose. Again, I got a list of things that God got me standing for and fasting for, and I hope you got yours. And we're going to see some results. We got to. We got to. We're going to, put, we're going to put the Lord on the spot. Okay? Now, before we... Lord, how do you... Before we do that, let's just... Again, we, we, 1 John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Matthew 12, 29, one cannot rob Satan's kingdom without first binding Satan. You know how when people break in a house, if they see a man there, that's the, you know, wow, that's a strong man. Let's bind him. They tie him up, gag him. He's on the ground, can't do nothing. And they're able to go all through his house, smack the wife, kick the dog, bite the cat, throw the mice outside, and everything else. Rob, steal, take the silverware, everything they want to do. Because the man is bound. So... One cannot rob Satan's kingdom, meaning his house, with his sickness, uh, murder, lies, hurt, pain, stealing, poverty, drunkenness, revelings, carousing, everything, everything, everything. Demons doing all kind of stuff. That's how. That's why it associates with Jesus said, "Only then can his demons be cast out." When after you bind Satan. So when people be talking about, I cast you out, Satan, that ain't what Jesus said to do. He said, but, see, Satan, you got to understand how Satan operates. He get his demons to do his bidding. Now, there's sometimes he come and do it himself. That's true. That's true. But Jesus said, bind the devil. Bind him. Because when you bind him, he can't give no orders. He can't do nothing. Then you're able to cast his demons out to tell him, you know, it's like when you, when you, if you take over a gang and you bind the boss and, and gag him and throw him against the wall and you tell him, you know, you tell his boys, get out of here. And they run because they don't want you to beat them up. You didn't beat the baddest man in the, in the gang. And so it's the same thing with the enemy. When you bind him and use your God-given authority and listen, it's not you doing it. The Holy Ghost is empowering you. And while you're saying, and, and your terminology is important, you don't just start, oh, Satan, I bind you. Shut up. And No, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. And by the power of the Holy Ghost. Okay? Now, I got my list. I hope you got yours. Now walk with me in this prayer. 
Father, in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. God said, you sisters, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 5, cover your head, put something on the very top of your cranium. If you have a bonnet, put it on right now. If you have a, a prayer shawl, sisters, put it on right now. If you have a cap, a sheet, a towel, anything to cover your head, to veil yourself, put it on right now because you'll be showing that you are a submissive vessel and don't know the weave and the wig don't work. You need a, a, a covering, a hat, a scarf, or something that drapes down over your head. Not the hair, I'm telling you, not that wig. You might need to let your, your hair breathe anyway. But, you know, cover your head. Brothers, if you got on a hat, take it off. You got on a do-rag, take it off. If you got on a prayer shawl and you trying to be a Pharisee, man, take that off. You can put it around your shoulders. Just don't cover your head. Why? 1 Corinthians 11, 4. Write it down and read it on your own time. Now, Father, we come before you in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. We're coming before you, Lord, not just bringing your word to you, but holding you to it. You said in your word, since there was no one else higher than you to swear by, you swear by yourself. So we are holding you to your word. First, we like to ask you to forgive us for any and every sin that we have committed from the time we was born up to now. Wipe the slate clean. Please, we acknowledge that your word said we must talk about our sin. We confess that we have sinned and we ask you to forgive us. And then after doing those two things, then we can repent, turn away from it, and try to do better with your help. Because you said in John 15 and 5, write that down. In John 15 and 5, apart from you, we can do nothing. Now, I'd like to ask you to please lead me in this prayer. There's people that are sick that are calling on you right now that are your children. Please help them. Please heal them. Please wash them in the blood of the Lamb. There are some people, and I know this because you're telling me this. I don't know it on my own. You're revealing the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge to me. There are some people who are tired of drinking. They're just tired. Tired of being drunk. Tired of the odor that it produces in them. Tired of being a functional alcoholic. Just tired but they can't stop because of friends, family, and just self. Please, Father, help them. Wash them in the blood of the Lamb. Change their desire. Give them a desire to be clean and stay clean. Drink some soda, some water, a juice or something. Lord, please bless them. Every sip they take, let them hate it that much more. Until finally, they don't even want to look at it. Not just those that drink, but those that smoke weed, too. Those that take pills, too. 
Those that smoke crack, sniff Yale. All of that, too. There's people tired of being in bondage to Satan. And they need to be free. There's people that are going through financial problems right now. They're being pressured on every side and don't know which way to go. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you, Lord, to see about this situation. As long as they are calling on you, let them not be ashamed. Now, I agree with you on something, Lord. I agree with you 100%. In the book of John, chapter 17, I agree with you. And I'm not going to challenge you on that. In John 17, here's what you said when you were saying about the, the, the disciples, your apostles. You said, I pray for them. But then you said, I pray not for the world. So, Lord, this prayer is not for the world. Anyone that's not trying to serve you, trying to live for you, anyone that don't want to live for you and don't want to serve you, anyone that, that, don't, that just don't acknowledge you and they think that they're the cat's meow and the dog bow wow and the bees bzz, and the birds chirp and, and, and all of that and the crickets crick, those that think they're all of that, Father, I'm not praying for them. Those that are handling the word of God and feeding it to people and they're doing it wrongly and they're unteachable and don't want to be straightened out or help to be fixed, I'm not praying for them. But I'm praying for those that have been calling on you day and night and it seems like they're not reaching you. And they don't know what to do, God. Maybe they're praying wrong. But I'm praying for them. And as you have them under this prayer, Lord, we are praying together, joining our faith. Feed the hungry. Clothe the naked. Shelter the homeless. Please have mercy. Please have mercy. Please have mercy. Those that are in the hospitals, get ready to go through surgery. Guide the hands of the physician. I would rather ask you to throw your weight around and just heal them so when the physicians start taking another x-ray, what they thought they saw is gone. Oh, you're still a healer again i'm not praying for the world there's some people on their deathbed right now that you have been sending word to them they haven't been listening they rejected you they said they didn't want to hear nothing about you lord sometimes people like that at the last leg, they tried to say, okay, I believe, uh-uh, mm-mm, mm-mm. No, if they think that they could pull the wool over your eyes, they don't know you. Have mercy, Father, on your children. All of us have something we're standing for and praying for. Again, have mercy on your children in Jesus' name. We seal that request in Jesus' name. You said anything that you ask using my name, that will I do. That's what you said. You said that. 
We're holding you to your word. <laughs> you also said in the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 11 for the scripture saith whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed verse 12 for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him so again I'm not praying for the world but I'm praying for all of us that are calling on you and you said we shall not be ashamed Lead me in this prayer. Tell me what to say. In the name of Jesus. Now, for all of us that have a list, Lord, some of us might have people around us and we don't want to say what's on our list. So it's important to write it down. I thank God that in the sanctuary it's just you and I. But you know what's on this list. You read very well. You write a language that no one understands. Uh, scripture says you wrote on the wall. Nobody could understand what you wrote. They saw a hand and didn't know what you was writing. But you revealed it to the prophet. Now, Father, we're going to stand Isaiah 65, 24, you said, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. So that means you've already answered what we're coming to you with right now. I'd just like to say, thank you. All right, we're not gonna jump, shout, skip, we ain't doing none of that, not right now. We're gonna be mature with a blessing and just say, thank you, Lord, because your word said it right there. So we're gonna thank you right now. And I ask that you put that to the side. And you said, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. So that means you're still listening to us. Glory. And now we're going to hold you to Matthew 12, verse 29. One cannot rob Satan's kingdom without first binding Satan. Only then can his demons be cast out and then you said in Matthew chapter 18 verse 18 you was talking to your disciples and you plainly told them whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven now father For those of us that have oil, if you have oil, pull it out. Those of y'all that's filled with the Holy Ghost, anoint your lips, anoint your tongue, anoint your head. In the mighty name of Jesus, anoint your hands. Pray as the Lord leads you. First the binding and the loosing. I'm not going to holler. I'm not going to scream. Because the word of God already gave us the instruction and the authority. I tell you, that's, that was a powerful show. That was really, really, really a powerful show. Join us the next time when the Lord leads us to go back in the scripture with some more information. Maybe it'll be with one of my friends. Maybe it'll be just me. I don't know. Either way, the Lord 
will be orchestrating the lesson. God bless you. And take care. <laughs> Till the next time. In Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have in you. And all that you are in my life. For all that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how else my life would be without you. As long as I have Jesus, I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have. Sad.